What's up gamers, how's it going? It's John, and in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at this At Games Legends Gamer Pro. Uh, this just came out last year, late last year, 2020. Uh, it retails for, they say on the website, 250 US dollars. I've seen it at GameStop, and I've seen it at Walmart online for around 229. I picked this up at Walmart. I got a great deal on it. I got online, rollback special. I paid 100 US dollars for it, pretty much 99 US dollars, which I think is a great deal. Uh, I'm a huge arcade game fan. I love playing the ar classic arcades. There's a lot to be said about playing games with joysticks and, and buttons opposed to a controller. It's just a completely different experience. The thing, the downfall about arcade games, of course, is that they're really hard to move logistically. They're over, typically over 300 pounds. They're really, really heavy. This might be an option for you if you don't have an arcade game at home and you're looking to kind of recreate that arcade gaming experience. This would be a good affordable option for you. It has 150 built-in games included. There is a service I'll talk more about later in the video that it's a subscription-based service. So you can unlock additional games. Uh, there's also pinball games you can play, which are side buttons on here as well. Uh, the joystick quality is good. I can, I've been playing this for a little bit. Uh, buttons are good. You can always replace these uh, if you feel in, ever inclined to upgrade uh, the feel of the arcade stick. It does come with a rollerball, which is also really nice. It has a pretty good mix of both arcade games as well as console gaming. Some console games that are notable are is the Star Wars Trilogy for Super Nintendo. Uh, those are great. Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back, Super Return of the Jedi. Those are, are quality platforming games. If you're a big Star Wars fan like I am, my favorite of those three, by the way, is Empire Strikes Back. Super Empire Strikes Back is awesome. It also has a lot of the Disney classic games for the Genesis, including Lion King, Aladdin it has Jungle Book. Those are some notable games on there as well. Uh, classic games from, from Taito, other games as well. Uh, Pico Interactive also has a handful of games available. Um, so anyway, without any further ado, I'll plug this in. Before I do that though, it does. in addition to this, I just want to explain what you get with this. You also get this, this kind of looks like a hockey puck. It's maybe a little bigger than a hockey puck. This is actually where the games are. It's a single board computer. I'm sure it's like a Raspberry Pi in this thing. Uh, it does have, of course, your AC adapter. The cool thing about this joystick is it runs off of a lithium battery. It takes about five hours to charge initially. I'm not quite sure how long the battery life lasts, but you can play for, for some time uh, without any issues. And you hook the USB here. Um, it does come with an HDMI cable, but this is honestly the shortest HDMI cable I've ever seen. I think it's about, a, they, they say it's about a foot. It looks even shorter than that. Uh, so if you have your own HDMI cable, which if you have other consoles, I'm assuming you have one laying around your house, I definitely would recommend using that. So you basically how you hook it up, you hook this up to your TV through HDMI. Uh, it is It connects wirelessly, I'm assuming through some type of Bluetooth technology. It connects, it also has a uh, cable here. Uh, it has an internet LAN cable here, ethernet. So that's cool. Uh, it does have Wi-Fi capabilities. And what's also very unique about this is you can actually, through their monthly subscription service, you can play games online, multiplayer, and there's a voice chat feature. You can stream games uh, anywhere from the basic plan, which is free uh, at 720 at 30 frames per second, or you, if you subscribe to their, their monthly service, which is $20 a month, which can add up pretty quickly. Or if you want to do it in a bulk, a six month package, you can get it for 60 bucks. So uh, basically cut that price in half uh, for $10 a month. You can, uh, if you do that, you can stream at 1080p HD and 60 frames per second. So. It's kind of taking some elements of the modern gaming as well as retro gaming. Without any further ado, let's plug this bad boy in. I'm gonna show you the game list, show you how it works. Overall, I'm fairly impressed with this. Ad Games has been around for, for a while. They're, they're probably best known for their Atari flashback consoles that they've been doing for, for years now. And I feel like their, their products getting better quality. I noticed they not, not only have this now, but they have a full size arcade now, Legends Arcade. They also have a, a digital pinball machine now that you can pick up for, for substantial amount of money. Uh, so, and they also have a mini version of this as well. So the mini version only comes with a hundred built-in games and only has one set of controllers and it is missing notably the roller ball, roller track, which is awesome. So before I dive into the video, I do want to go over the controls. Obviously you got your, your two joysticks. You have your roller ball controller here. This is kind of your home button. Uh, you have a rewind feature because this is all emulation. You know, there's a, a rewind feature, which is kind of nice. Player one, player two. Uh, these are your action buttons. They're all noted. Uh, you have X, Y, A, B. RT, R2, RB, R1, LB, L2, L1, LT, L2. It's a mouthful, I know. but um, And this is where you start it. So you can turn it on. It will blink. It will show you 
give you kind of idea as far as battery charge life. In the back, there is a power adapter as well to, if you want to plug it right into directly into uh, the wall, although there is a USB. And it does come with a USB cord, which is much longer than the HDMI cable, which is a good thing. And it has a controller uh, bus as well. You can connect additional controllers. There is a light gun that they are uh, making for this as well. So there's some light gun games you can purchase through at games, and uh, that's a pretty cool thing. I think that's a pretty cool addition. Uh, and the really nice feature about this too is if you look on each side, they each have these side buttons. And I mentioned if you subscribe to the service, they do have pinball, digital pinball games you can play using the side buttons. That's a really nice feature. I'm not quite sure if the mini has that or not, to be honest. So without any further ado, let's, let's dive right into it. I'll show you some gameplay. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, so for the most part, it, it's pretty easy to connect. Uh, once you're paired uh, and you turn off and on again, you don't need to repair it, which is nice. Uh, make sure when you do pair it, uh, they call the hockey puck looking thing the core, the Legends core. And that's where actually where all the games are actually stored. There's no games built into uh, this controller panel here, which initially when I got it, I thought maybe the games were built in here. That's not the case, which actually is a pretty cool thing. I'll explain why more about that in a second. Um, so to pair it, you pull down this for three seconds, the middle button, you'll start seeing these blue buttons here uh, blink really rapidly. And there's a button on the core. If you hit it, it's going to, you can see it's going to try to connect to both the controller deck one and two. Make sure that you're connected to both controller decks. You can play the games with just the controller deck one paired. However, if you don't have the second deck uh, paired, rollerball will not work. So definitely make sure uh, you have both those paired. Let's exit out of this. All right, so the game itself list, it reminds me of what you would see on like a Nintendo Mini or, or Genesis Mini, a lot of the, the classic minis. Uh, one thing, the games are all alphabetical. If I go down, you can't scroll to more games. There's 150 built in, as I mentioned before. You actually have to go left, which not a huge deal, but I feel it's more natural for me to actually want to go vertically opposed to horizontally here. Uh, some good games here. You got um, Bubble Bobble, of course, which is classic. Uh, Burger Time. Uh, another another classic Data East game. Um, some of these games I've, I've never even heard of. I've never heard of Big Run, for example. Uh, Carrier Aces, I've never heard of. I've heard of Congo Caper. I believe that was a game that came out on the Super Nintendo as well. Um, 4078, again, a game I've never heard of. City Connection, yeah, I've heard of that through uh, Nintendo NES port. Um, some of these actually are, are, are fairly decent games. Elevator Action, another NES port, great game. Uh, and some of these, like Gargoyles, is a, a port to from the Genesis or Mega Drive, right? So some of these games are not only just arcade, but they're actual console, well, console as well. Now, to get to the side menu, hit the LT, L2 button here, and you get to the games. Oops, let me go back. Okay. Go down. Okay. Uh, you can see you can go to Featured, and your action button is the A button here. So these are the Featured buttons, uh, games anyway. These are Aladdin for the Genesis, which, by the way, is the best 16-bit port of Aladdin. The one for Super Nintendo is so much different. Fun game still, but the Genesis one is where it's at for sure in my book. Burger Team Time, uh, Fix It Felix, which is a game technically never released. I believe this is the, the Genesis port. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Super Star Wars Trilogy, which is awesome for a Super Nintendo. They have Super Star Wars, Return Jedi, and then Empire Strikes Back. Not really in order, not that it really matters, but uh, and then Tetris 2 and then Lion King. So uh, let's go back to the side menu. You've got the leaderboards which is cool. Uh, make sure that you are connected to Wi-Fi. To do that, you go up to uh, their settings. Make sure you put your Wi-Fi information in. Uh, when you sign into the Arcade Net, which is their monthly subscription fee, it is $20 a month to do that. What you unlock by doing that, you get uh, additional games. I'll show you more of those in a second. I did not sign up for it. Uh, you also have an option to, I think it's like $60 for the six months. So basically half off uh, if, you, if you commit to six months of doing it. Um, you have the wireless pairing, uh, wireless control deck mode. I'll do another video on this in the, in the future, but I believe you can actually hook this up to uh, a single board con uh, computer. So you can hook it up to a Raspberry Pi, sync it with a uh, Ojoid N2, et cetera, which is really cool because the, actually, uh, it's, I think it's really great that I, I games actually thought about that. You've got um, versions, there's different updates, I'm sure, right? Like normal uh, health check to see where the games are in, in arcade. Uh, different controllers. So there is a, a light gun game, for example, you can, uh, or a light gun that you can purchase separately for the, the shooters. Let's go back up. 
uh, BYOG, this is uh, their other uh, additional add-ons. Uh, cloud gaming, you can uh, local stream if you have or connect to the arcade net. Local streaming, you can do up to 1080p if you're connected to the service. I think it's otherwise it's 70, 760p. Uh, arcade net, these are some additional games uh, that are not available through standard. Uh, you have games like, uh, let's see, Bad Street Brawler. I think this, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a game came out only in Japan. It's like a, a Streets of Rage clone, Final Fight clone. It only came out in Japan, so it's kind of cool it's on there. A lot of these are uh, Taito games, Taito games. Uh, let's see, um, some of these I've never heard of, to be quite honest with you. Which is a good and bad thing. I mean, Shut Up and Jam I've heard of, certainly. I think that's, a you know, for the Genesis, whatever. Uh, looping, of course, I've heard of. But uh, some of these might be, uh, I think that's a Neo Geo, Go Go Go. Uh, Akari Warriors, I uh, think came out for, I know there was a port for the NES. Um, what else? Uh, Metal Slug, of course, and Neo Geo. POW was a Neo Geo. Uh, you have, um, there's a football one. Oh, uh, Shinobi. Or Sam Samurai Showdown, rather. Samurai Showdown 2. Uh, let's see what else. Super Tank, Tank, Target. Now, they're going to update games as well. Now, they do also say that there's there's pinball games on here as well, which I showed you the side buttons, which which is a benefit too, and you can't play the pinball. So I'm not set up for the program. I think $20 a month is a little steep in my book, uh, especially, you know, you're probably better off getting like Xbox Game Pass, in my opinion, or if you want to uh, get more bang for your buck when it comes to gaming go. But I do give them credit for kind of going more um, with the leaderboards, I think is really cool. I like the idea of uh, game chat. I like the idea of uh, streaming. They're kind of combining the retro with the modern. I think, uh, kudos to them. Uh, so let's go back to, uh, let's go to channel. This is, you have different, uh, you can data use games, Disney games. Let's check out the Disney games. Uh, you got Aladdin, Gargoyles, Star Wars, because Star Wars owns Disney now, Lucasfilm, technically. Uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors is on here, which is, uh, this is the Genesis port, uh, not the Super Nintendo port. Uh, let's go back. Uh, Jalico. Uh, they made uh, Bases Loaded, I believe, um, back for the NES. Uh, Pico. Or Pico for both. I think it's Pico. Um, a lot of these games I have not heard of, to be honest with you, but it uh, doesn't mean that they're not good. It just means you can just explore and check out. Now, they do have this Power Punch 2, which I definitely have heard of that. Um, that was a sequel technical to, to like Mike Tyson's Punch Out or Punch Out. Uh, you got uh, Taito. I used to say Taito back in the day when I was a kid, but Tomato, Tomato, Bubble Bobble, which is great. Uh, crack and Pop. Uh, some other games, uh, Operation Wolf, which is a great arcade, and this is the arcade port, so that's that's cool. Uh, and they have their own category for Tetris, so for those Tetris fans out there, probably one of the best games out there, in my opinion, of all time. It's, it's awesome. Uh, notice here there's a trophy. Some of these games have leaderboards. And so if I go to it, let's check out Tetris, you see there's a QR code. I can actually scan that, and it'll take me to a leaderboard on my phone. Uh, so the real-time leaderboard, you have to be connected on Wi-Fi. You have to uh, submit your high score. Uh, to be active. It doesn't show you the high scores on here itself. You have to go to on your phone. You know, it is what it is. Uh, let's check it out. Let's start game. This works as a start button. Or, I'm sorry, A is to play. It tells you right there. But this does work as a start button. S most games have a rewind feature, which is right here, which is really cool because this is all emulation. Um, so it actually comes in really handy here. Let's go click on here. This is the option menu. I have save, stop, uh, save slots up to five, which is cool. So I've hit A, it's gonna save it. Let's go back. And I can load it. Right, I'm not gonna do it right now because it's the same, same spot. Let's go back. Uh, let's also check out uh, button mapping. Some games do, uh, you can change the button mapping. Most games I've seen you can't, but at least shows you the controls, which is nice in case you were curious on what those are. Um, display mode, you can go to center, you can go to fit, which is kind of zooms in a little bit more. Every game has its own side art, which is really cool. I like that they've done that. And then scan lines, let's do fit. Uh, you have full, like completely fill, which widens it out even more. It stretches it. I'm not a huge fan of that. I do fit rather than fill, right? Let's go center. I actually prevent, the, but that's the best. The four by three. Uh, scan lines, you can do horizontal or vertical. Prefer horizontal. Let's check it out. Let's go... Uh, And, okay, here we go. 
All right, love the soundtrack. Now this is the um, the Tengen version, I believe, of, of Tetris, not the Nintendo version. Might be wrong on that. Uh, oh, God, they're giving me three of these. Now see, so say I messed up, I go rewind, check this out, this is really cool. Boom, boom. How cool is that? So I can, it's kind of a, a remake. So I can change the way I, it kind of cheats a little way. Oh, I pushed down way too fast on that. Okay, uh, we're going to exit this. Go to game, quick game. The scan lines will stick, so when I play another game, I can either turn them on or turn them off again. I will say this, that it does load super fast, but I've noticed that occasionally it does freeze and it froze on me this time and I'm not quite sure why it does this. So I've got to reboot it. Uh, and so just heads up, it does freeze occasionally. Now it froze on there for, it froze on me when I exit the game. And I noticed that it happens occasionally when I go into the menu option and leave it and exit the game, it will freeze. And in order to fix it, you got to unplug the core, plug back in. Fortunately, it boots up really quick. There really isn't much load time, but just be aware Hopefully they patch it. I know there's updates. Hopefully they fix that and address it. Not a deal breaker for me, but definitely kind of annoying that it does freeze. So just FYI there. Fortunately, the, this uh, controller deck is still synced, so I don't need to worry about syncing it over again. Let's go to uh, platforms. You got arcade games. It's nice it's got listed. Uh, you also have um, Zookeeper is a good one for sure. Let's see if I've heard of, of some of these. Some of these I'm not. I've not heard of the electric yo-yo. I'm not familiar with that one. Obviously, Space Invaders is a classic one, no doubt. Tetris, of course. Quicks. So there's there's some good ones. Operation Wolf is probably one of my favorites. Um, it is kind of hard to read the, the names. It's, they're, they're kind of blurry. I don't know if maybe I, my eyesight's going bad or what, but uh, it's not easy to read them, but not all of them have... High score, trophy, you can see the ones that do. At least they make that very clear. You can go to the Genesis. These are all Genesis games. I was right, Zombie Ate My Neighbors was Genesis, although uh, Fix It Felix was not. I'm curious what uh, port that is. Fix It Felix was a game that, kind of a, I guess a, you'd call it a homebrew game, never really officially it came out uh, by Disney, but based on Wreck-It Ralph. You got other consoles as well. Jim Powers, I think that was, uh, came out for the Super Nintendo, I believe. The, some of these are NES games. The fact that Star Wars trilogy is on here, that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. I'm a big fan. Inputs. Uh, joystick or trackball. Let's go and check out the joystick game or trackball games. Uh, Operation Wolf. I got to check this out. So we're going to hit the A button. It shows the controls. We're going to hit A to play. I can add to my favorites as well by hitting these buttons here. Really quick load time, which is nice. Now, in order to put my credits in, this is kind of annoying. I've got to hit this, and I've got to hit insert coin, and that's how you do it. So there's kind of a two-step process there, but not a, not a huge deal. Um, I reset this so my scan lines now are off. Now let's turn on vertical scan lines. I'll show you what those look like. Uh, also, you can check out the, the spinner, uh, sensitivity on the spinner ball uh, display. This is center, fit, fill. Not a fan of fill. That just stretches it out. Let's do centers of the vast, in my opinion. Uh, let's do turn on vertical. Uh, you can control the button mapping as well. Uh, you can do add uh, configuration, which uh, restarts, go to proceed. You can dip switches, things like that. This may cause it to freeze again on me. We'll see. See how to exit out there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and put our credit in. Did I lose my credit? I must have lost my credit there. Okay, we're gonna uh, hit player one. A is fire. The trackball works pretty well. Pretty good. Another game that was ported to the NES, but uh, honestly, this is the way to play it. 
You gotta worry about your, your guns too. I think Taito did this game. I feel like Rambobon. Okay. Get my clip. Don't shoot the nurses. Oh, almost dead. Yeah, this is intense. Let's get him. Yeah, okay. You guys get the idea. Okay, so full disclosure, I think it's my capture device that's causing it to, to not appear again. Uh, however, the other night I was playing this, even without the capture device and when I was exiting games, it was freezing when I did go to the dip switches occasionally. So just FYI there, I think this case, it was my capture device causing issues, but uh, so full disclosure there. Um, let's go check out some other games. Let's go to all games. Uh, let's check out Aladdin. It's a classic game, of course, by Virgin. And let's see what it looks like. You got button mapping, uh, center, I got vertical scan lines on. It's very subtle. When you notice if you move the joystick, you do hear a click. It does have a nice arcade feel. The, the buttons are very responsive, which is great. Man, I love this game. Okay. Great soundtrack too. I guess I can to I see the vertical lines a little bit. It's uh, very subtle. The horizontal ones are, are much more uh, prevalent. You can see it. And if I want to rewind, that's a pretty cool feature, I think, anyway. Okay, let's go back, quick game. Okay. Um, what's another game I want to check out? We got Bad Dudes, Bubble Bobble. Uh, this is uh, Bubble Symphony, which is a follow up to uh, Bubble Bobble. I'll check it out. Uh, it is not, not compatible here, so the save, load, and rewind function is not compatible with every game. Definitely not this one. Graphically, it plays very similar to Bubble Bobble, but the, it's got updated graphics a little bit more. Like 16-bit graphics. Just got to put my credit in. You can play up to four players on this one. Obviously, I only have two joysticks here, but the original arcade. Oh, I can jump on that. That's cool. Ah! Oh. Really fun graphics, though. Really fun game to play co-op. We'll turn the scan lanes off. And I like the side art that they do here. It's great. I can choose my own path as well. That's different than the original Bubble Bobble. So they've added some, some upgrades, which is cool. I'm not seeing many fighting games. It'd be cool if they could license uh, like Capcom, get Street Fighter 2 on here. That'd be cool with the joystick. Mortal Kombat would be awesome. I know licensing can be kind of expensive, so. Okay, so uh, there's some issue with Elgato in capturing this because it does not want to work with Elgato at four high. Every time I exit a game, it seems to kind of reboot and does kind of seems to freeze using Elgato. So again, that's my capture device. Uh, very frustrating. Um, anyway, uh, continue to check out games here. Check out a few more. Burger, team is, Burger Time is classic. Elevator Action, another classic one. Joe Mac, 
You got Caveman Ninja, all three of them. Lost Tropics and Returns. That's close. Let's check out uh, the Disney. Let's check out the Star Wars game here. Let's go to Channels. And we'll go to Disney. And Star Trek's back is my favorite of the three. It's true with the movies, too. I believe JVC did these games back in the day. They took them out. Hit start. Cool side art though on the side there. This looks really cool. I don't remember any of the passwords. Hit start. Brave or Jedi. We'll stick with Brave. Look at that, uh, 2020. Copyright, it's interesting to change that. If you haven't played this game, that's great. If you have a Super Nintendo, check it out. If you end up getting this, definitely a game worth checking out. What I paid for this thing was, I got it on sale for about $100, so really paid less than a dollar a game on, uh, if you think about it that way. About 75 cents a game, not a bad deal. Considering that you can actually hook this up to a Raspberry Pi and other devices as well, I think it just adds more value to picking, picking up one of these decks. And you can, of course, upgrade the buttons and the joystick. I think the joystick's not bad. It's not a screw-on knob top, which is great. Uh, not a big fan of those, necessarily. Um, it feels pretty solid. It's pretty heavy. It's about, I don't know, 10 pounds or so. Definitely not the 300 pounds that you get with, uh, obviously, an arcade. So if you're looking to kind of emulate the arcade feel and experience, this is definitely a uh, a more cost-effective way to doing that. Let's skip this real quick. This game gets really hard, especially the Swamp Monster. I remember the Swamp Monster, Nagabob being crazy hard. Now, sometimes the mapping... Yeah, so they have X. They have these two buttons, kind of different. Now, let's see if I can change the mapping. Let's see if I can change it. So, I don't like X being fire. I want... B to be fine. Okay, click on this. Does not support key configuration features. Okay, I've not come to a game that allows that. I'm sure there are because it wouldn't have an option otherwise, but you're kind of stuck at the mercy of their, their mapping here and, and it kind of feels uncomfortable, <laughs> the mapping of this game. I should find a taunt on here shortly here. Double jump. There he is. Classic. Okay. We'll check out one last game for you guys. Um, overall, I, I think the the layout's cool. I mean, it's it's not bad. I, I I wish you could go up and down. It just feels like it'd be better that way. Um, oh, let's check fi fix it, Felix. And uh, last game I want to show you. Game is based on the movie Wreck-It Ralph by Disney. People have made arcade conversions in this game as well. Pretty basic controls. It's the goal is to fix the window panes uh, and avoid the bricks that uh, Ralph is dropping on you. But let's go ahead and uh, start. I didn't have to put any credits for that one. I'm not quite sure what this, I have played this on the Genesis Mega Drive and it does look like this. I'm not quite sure what system emulation this is playing on. I feel like if they can get the Star Wars license and work with Disney, I feel like they can get Capcom and, you know, Warner Brothers for Mortal Kombat to make right. This is a really fun game, by the way. That was close. No! Oh! Died. I'm terrible at it. Have you guys seen uh, Fix It Felix or uh, Wreck It Ralph? Why would this like invincibility? I must have gotten hit there. Anyway, <laughs> not the best at the game, clearly. But let me know what you guys think. I think overall, it's definitely worth picking up, especially if you can get a good deal on it. Definitely look at getting the Legends Gamer Pro uh, by At Games. 
Um, I think I, I give them kudos for being creative and, and do online and streaming. They're kind of combining that, that modern gaming feel to the retro gaming feel. Uh, I think overall the game selection, uh, sure they have a handful of games you've never really heard of, but they've got some good games like the Star Wars uh, series. Cool to see this. Uh, Zombies Ate My A Neighbors is a great game as well. It's, it's a classic LucasArts game. It kind of feels like the graphics feel like uh, if you ever play like Day of the Tentacle, but the goal of that is each each level you got to shoot these zombies. Really fun, and that's included in this as well. So that's cool to see. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing, guys. I appreciate you guys liking this video, commenting. What games would you like to see on this platform? Uh, leave a comment below. Are you guys planning on picking up one? Are you guys interested in getting one? Pick it up below. Uh, make a comment below. Thanks, guys, so much, and we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Of course, game on.